Liz Crosby here with a yoga flow. Today we're going over one armed handstands. I think that this is a corner of the universe that gets often neglected in the yoga community and there aren't enough yoga classes online showing us how to navigate into these spaces and they are some of the deepest, darkest recesses of the microcosm and we need to start shining life force energy into that space. So feel free to modify of course as needed and we're going to do a little warm up of course before we even attempt to move in, into, this, into this shape that is the one-armed handstand. And even if you aren't even attempting today, you'll still get a lot of sacred geometry in, you're going to get a lot of expansion of consciousness and then, of course, you might be able to actually start to visually emulate, integrate what it might possibly be like one day to physically embody the one-handed handstand. So even if you're not actually going for it quite yet, I'd always like to say, watch, get the visual download first. So let's get started in tabletop pose with some wrist warm-ups. Wrist is so important. It is like the weakest link, and as I always like to joke, we have all of us uh, given into the societal contract, and so there are certain spaces in all of our matrices, mind-body matrices, wrist ups, so some little push-ups with the wrists that are weak spots in our bodies just because of the way that we've fashioned our, our means of locomotion and day-to-day -day behavioral patterns. So again, wrists are definitely a weak point for everyone across the board, but they can be strengthened. It takes this diligent practice and redirecting our energy, our concentration. All right, I'm gonna feel a nice, gentle warmth developing in the wrists. Then fingertips point towards midline, palms facing up, and then move the shoulders from side to side. Notice I've got my knees a little bit wider too, so I can delegate a little bit more weight into my shins. You can take some circles around the wrist if you'd like. And then switch the direction of the circles. Pause and then bend the elbows while the hands in the fist, straighten the arms, breathe into the wrists. Beautiful, now fingertips point towards your knees, palms facing down. Slowly lean your weight back and then peel the heels of the wrists up off of the mat. So preparing these guys for weight bearing. And then gently release, walk your hands back, lift your knees up, stretching out the bridges of the feet, leave lifted on top of the toe knuckles. Then slowly lower it back down again. Come forward back into your tabletop pose. Take a couple cat cows and heels melt the heart forward and up, sit into your gaze up. And excellent turn on the spine, gaze beneath. Moving in and out of your cat cow shapes and connecting the breath with your movement. So a couple reasons why I think one arm handstand has not been unearthed yet in the yoga community. It definitely is in the circus acrobatic community, so that gives me hope. <laughs> but not quite in the yoga community yet. Um, it might be because there's uh, not as much discipline in the, the yoga community to get into your bear pose, hip circle, shoulder circles. And also certain parts of the practice are emphasized while other parts are neglected. So for instance, the handstand, a lot of times people are actually doing a mini plunge in their handstands, which is breaking that straight line. And especially when you move and navigate into one arm handstand, you can't have a dent. You can't have a dent between your arm and the rest of your spine. Unless you're probably also like a bitch. <laughs> Walking these back on the dance floor. Not the hard time, of course, when that makes sense. It doesn't throw the ceiling. Uh, I, don't, I don't think he'll ever watch um, one of my YouTube videos, but the dude is like one of the best hand balancers in the world. Amazing. <laughs> so that dude can do a one arm quash, no problem. A couple more deep energetic breaths into your thoracic. So moving in the exact opposite direction here is, is really, really crucial for finding the straight line. And again, it's not your fault, yoga community. We, we love our vinyasas, right? Down dog, plank, chaturanga. 
And if you are hunching your shoulders even just a little bit and you continually vinyasa over and over and over again, you're going to develop muscle tension, which will break that straight line. Roll it forward into your space pose. Hips to mat. Broaden across the collarbones. Drop right here towards right shoulder, left shoulder the chest, left or left shoulder. Deeper dry breaths, breathe into the cervical spine. I think that that is probably the biggest blockage. And uh, another big blockage would be the hips. So if you don't have open hips, some of the easier, I mean, one-arm handstand is really difficult, really challenging no matter what, but some of the easier variations of one-arm handstand involve using the legs as, a, as like a scale, like the Libra scales. And if you don't have open hips, then all of the hardest um, one-arm handstands are the only one-arm handstands available to you. <laughs> so, coming back in the center. It is literally like navigating through a labyrinth, extending your arms forward, but you yourself are the labyrinth. The right arm extends forward, left leg reaches back, lift, and switch. Left arm, right leg, and switch. And switch. Beautiful, both arms, both legs lift. Cactus the arms, press down through the fingertips, lift your chest up. And drop right shoulder, fingers over your left. Inhale through center. Exhale the twist. Moving side to side. Pause with your feet, stretching sensation. Deeper jelly breaths. Back through the center as you inhale. And exhale, slowly release it back down. Hands come behind the back, interlace your fingers, press the palms together, and massage your sitting with your knuckles. And I don't want to sound rude, like you yogis, you're not disciplined enough. <laughs> Reach the hands back behind. Reach out to the balls, okay, tuck the tuner next down at the crown. I've done my research. I'm, I'm still in my infancy phases of learning how to do one arm handstand. Release the interlace hands like underneath your shoulders. Press down, lift up, wrap elbows and shoulders back. It takes, it takes a lot of work, it really does. Broaden across the chest. And exhale, slowly release the spine back down. Slide the arms forward back into your space. From your sphinx pose, tuck the toes. Rise the hips up and back into your dolphin pose. From dolphin, pressing down through the palms, rise the elbows off of the mat, downward facing dog pose. And then walk it out, bending one knee and the other, allow the hips to shift from side to side, breathing into the calves, the hamstrings, and the lower back. So we are literally going to say one arm handstand for the very end. It's going to be a repeat posture. So no worries, if, even if you aren't attempting, you're still going to get a good yoga flow in, right? Like extend up and back, open it out, bend the knee, take some hip circles, ankle circles. We extend the right leg, square off the hip, exhale, right knee, right tricep, and forward into your plank pose, from navel to spine. Inhale to re Exhale, right knee, left tricep. Inhale to extend. Exhale, knee to nose. Round upper spine, gently set the right foot between the palms. Left knee lowers, arms up, toes, sweep arms up, low crescent pose. Expand across the heart center and broaden across the collarbones. Exhale, right hands come down to the mat, straight through your right leg, half splits. Come to the heel of the right foot, reach the toes back towards your face. And tilt the foot from side to side. Send the breath in. Rebending in the right knee. Tuck the left toes, engage the left thigh, lift the left knee up, left hand pants, right arm sweeps up, open heart and press it. Rotate onto the outer edges of both your feet and left feet, left hip dip, reach the right knee back behind you. Beautiful, lifting it back up again. Now slide the right foot on top of the left. You can lower a form, you can lower a knee. Push the floor away, lift the hips up, side plank. Right foot can step back behind. Press up through both feet, wild thing. Roll it back into downward facing. Vinyasa, if it's pleasing, roll the side forward, inhale, plank. Exhale, shatamba. Inhale, urdha mudra. Exhale, lower toes, hips rise up and back, bottom yoga. Left leg extends as you inhale. Open it out, bend the knee, take some hip circles, ankle circles. We extend the left leg back. 
Exhale, left knee, left tricep, come forward into your plank pose for navel in. Inhale to extend. Exhale, left knee, right tricep. Inhale to extend. Exhale, knee to nose. Round upper spine, step left between the palms. Right knee lowers, arms like toes, sweep arms up, low press and coast. And I've noticed a lot of the professional hand balancers, even the dudes, have remarkably open hips. Hands can be down to the mat, straight into your left leg, half splits. As I mentioned before, that guy Pavel Stankiewicz, really all of them, Andre Vondarenko, Miguel hand balance, they got more open hips than me. I'm like, whoa, I gotta, I gotta work on my hips. Get those guys open a little bit more. Again, when the hips are open, then you can set a nice line. And if the line is set, then it's much easier to balance. We want to rely upon our bone structure more so than our stabilizer muscle engagements. You're still going to get the chiseled abs and whatnot. Rebound the left knee. Not that that's what we want, but tuck the right toes, engage the right thigh. It's still a nice byproduct, right? Left arm sweeps up and down. Rotate onto the outer edges of both your feet and let the right hip dip. What I found too is that your two-handed handstands will get stronger when you work on one-handed handstands. Go figure, right? Start to lift it back up again. Slide left foot on top of the right. Push the floor away, lift the hips up. And left foot can step back behind. Press down through both feet, lift the hips up wildly. Roll it back into your downward facing. Vinyasa, if it's pleasing, lift heels, bend knees. Inhale, hold the spine forward into your plank pose. Exhale, shut the arms, hug the elbows in. Inhale to your earth and look, roll shoulders back. And exhale, roll over the toes. Hips rise up and back. Downward facing dog pose. From downward facing, walk the hands back to the feet. Allow for a little bend the knees. Grab opposite elbows, shake the head yes. Shake the head no, releasing your cervical spine. Releasing the hands down, right hand plants, bend right knee. Sweep the left arm up and twist the spine open. Left hand can reach back for the right thigh, half bind. Maybe there is a full bind, right arm threads through. Catch the wrist. Gently release and switch. Left hand plants, bend left knee, sweep right arm up and twist the spine open. Right hand can reach back for the left thigh, left arm threads through for the full bind. Gently release. Now both hands to mat. Inhale as you peel the chest forward, find some length, arch your spine. And let's do a little press walk. Alright, so if you've been following with me, let's try a little float in between. <clears throat> Inhale, peel the chest forward, find length, arch. Plant down through palms. Maybe try a toe down and sit down. Inhale, push us forward, find the arch. Plant down through palms. Maybe try a little flare, kick out wide. Sit down one more time. Inhale, push us forward, find the arch. Plant down through palms. Maybe take it up. And then slowly lower. Inhale, peel chest forward, find the arch. Exhale, forward fold. Chair pose right away. Bend the knees, both arms sweep. Shift weight into the big toe, put your heels up. Slower down. Knees open wide, put your arms straight through. Jam and take a seat. Float those feet. Knees can stay bent or straighten through the legs. Quick foot right, inhale, to lower. Exhale, to lift. Inhale, to lower. Exhale to lift. Once more, inhale, lower, pause and hold here for five, four, three, two, and one. Plug your knees in. Start space marks. People come wide, reach your arms through the arms and squat the foot of the mat. So the arm balances will firm and tone the arm muscles. It's always nice to work low to the ground and build that strong foundation. Feel free to just step the left foot back as we're ending up in a lunge. Knees come high, coming towards the armpits, and right forward with one of both feet. Those of you that want to, you want to take a little headstand intermission, feel free, crown to crown, press it up, lift it up. I love the headstand because you make the head a part of the foundation and you can streamline that energy straight through the spine and out through the legs. Again, I love the inversions because they will enhance stabilizer muscle engagement 
which will protect your spine and your back bends. Knees come high up and in towards the armpits. Press it up, lift it up, root to the right. Really all the movements of the spine. Now shift it into the right shin. Left leg extends back at the Padabakasana. Step the left foot way back. Right foot steps between the palms. So meet us in the lunge. Left foot swings down 45 into the rise, warrior one. Both arms sweep up. Hands come behind the back, interlace, broaden across the collarbones as you inhale. Exhale, hinge from hips, lead with heart. As right shoulder passes, right knee, then begin to round, lengthen the whole spine up and out of the pelvic bowl. Breathe into your lower back. Ground down, lift up, roll the spine up, release the interlace, both arms, sweep up. Open out warrior two, adjust the stance. Get right to it so we have time to make use of the wall for our inversion time. Flip the right palm, reverse your warrior, left hand to fire calf, length and through the right side body. Breathe into the right side body. Inhale as you go up. Right elbow, right back, left arm extends forward, extended side angle. Left hand can reach back for the half bind. Right hand in step of the right foot, there is a full bind. Feel free to take flight birds. Left foot can step forward, press up, lift up, reach your eyes. Bird of paradise. And then slowly lower birds. Pressing down through the right foot. Shift it forward into crown, left leg extends back. Down, half knee pose on the way back. And then step it way back. Knee spine, rise warrior two. Straighten through the right leg as you rise. Heel to the left foot forward, shorten the stance. Deepen in the right hip crease, extend right arm forward, reach. Right hand falls to ankle, shin floor, left arm extends up and twist. Really engage Mool Bandha. We're holding lots of space. We're taking in all sorts of arrangements of the femur head bone in the hip socket. So as long as you're engaging all the muscles surrounding that right hip, and we'll do the left side, of course, you will <laughs> create tapas throughout the entire hip socket, throughout the whole hip joint. Left hand comes down to the mat. Sweep the left foot forward and to the left. Parj Bhattanasana. Inhale as you find length. Exhale forward folded. Optionally, you can lift up onto your fingertips. Straighten through both your arms, rounding the upper spine. Plug the right femur head bone into the right hip socket. Pull the right foot off of the mat just an inch. And then set the right foot back down. Walk the hands to the right. Lengthen the spine up and out of the pelvic bowl. Breathe into your lower back. Left hand plants, outer to the right foot. Right hand to your sacrum. Roll the right shoulder back. Maybe right arm extends up and twists. From the navel and as you twist, gaze at the right fingertips. Here we go. Taking it onto one foot. Gently bend the right knee. Knee weight forward. Left hand forward of the right foot. Press up, lift up. Look left leg up. Parvarita Ardha Chandrasana. Now maybe bend the left knee, reach back with the right hand for the left foot. Kick the foot into the hand, sink shut the heart forward towards the front of the mirror. Do your child pass and variation, optional. Gently release, we extend the left foot back, right hand to mat, square off the hips for a moment. Gather your core, gather your breath, roll the left hip now to stack. Hips external, left arm extends up, half moon. New arrangement, a femur head bone and hip socket. Again, embrace the heat generation. Bend left knee, reach back with the left hand for the left foot. Kick the foot into the hand. Swing shut the heart forward towards the front of the room. So again, we're warming up those hips so that we can get them open. And then gently release. Both hands to mat, standing splits. Breathe into the right hamstrings. And now if you'd like to you can step the left foot forward to meet the right foot, or handstanders, feel free to take it up and connect the legs together at the top. Maybe if you want to, just start to think about it. Legs can come out wide and start to shift weight into the right hand. And maybe get light in the left. And then slowly lower back down. Lift the hip onto those fingertips. Your knees inhale as you peel just forward, find length arch. And exhale forward, fold it. Chair pose, bend the knees, 
Dog arm sweep. Shift weight into the big times, lift your heels up and slow it down. Knees open wide, reach your arms straight through and gently take a seat. Of course, I can speak from experience, but I can't take pictures of my divisions in third eye. I'm working on one hand handstand, even though I'm in my infancy stages, has enhanced my third eye activation when we straighten through the legs. Inhales to slowly lower, of course, stay away from the floor. Right. Exhales to lift. <laughs> Inhales to lower. Exhales to lift. Inhales to lower. Exhales to lift. Lower and hold here for five, four, three, two, one. And hug knees and start sticks up rocks. Forward and back. Feet will come wide. Reach your arms through. Malasana squat. So again, even if you're like, what the heck? This crowd class is crazy. Just again, just witness. Just take it in. Just do what you can and feel free to skip. If anything seems beyond your realm, even just getting exposure to it is going to start to kind of get those synapses firing, right? So those of you that are working into crow, maybe you just work a little bit of crow and then you step that right foot back. Maybe, and I remember the first time someone introduced like, a thought of a class to me, I was like, what? You can lift a knee off? Are you kidding me? Baby steps, yogis. Again, maybe you're just integrating the visual stimulus first. Knees can high up and in. Knee might pour it into crown, foot one or both feet up, then slowly lower, crown to ground, press it up, lift it up, try to headstand. You want to get so comfortable with that central line, right, the shishuna. We're just dancing around it, but you can close your eyes here. I know it's kind of tricky at first, but really feel it. Let yourself feel with that spiraling too bright of energy. And then slowly lower. Foot back, knees forward, work that counterbalance. Knees come high up and in. Press it up, lift it up, back into your crow. Again, you can take the fakie at the bottom block. Feel free to set that left foot down. It really does work. Fake it till you make it. Right knee comes off. Extend the right leg back at the bottom block. Step the right foot way back. Left foot steps between the palms. Meet me in the low lunge, yogis. Right foot swings down 45, heel to heel alignment, inhale rise, warrior one. Both arms sweep up. Hands come behind the back. Interlace, broaden across the collarbones as you inhale. Exhale, hinge from the hips. Lead with heart, humble, as left shoulder passes left knee, then begin to round, lengthen the whole spine. Up and out of pelvic bowl, breathe into lower back. Beautiful, grounding down to lift them. Roll the spine up, both arms sweep up. Open it out, warrior two, adjust the stance. Heel to arch, relax the shoulders, really extend up your fingertips. Flip the left palm, reverse your warrior right hand with your calf. Lengthen through left side body, breathe into the left side body. Inhale, rise. Left elbow, left thigh, right arm extends forward. Extended side angle. Right hand can reach back. For the half bind, left hand in step, left foot. There is a full bind. Full binders, if you did so, on the other side, take flight. Right foot steps forward, press up, lift up, root to rise. Gazing at a single point of focus, you're just straight through standing there, straight through lifted, send your breath. Send in Ujjayi. And then slowly lower words. Take your time. It's kind of like you're, you're carving out your spear. From the inside, right? Shift weight into the left foot, knee weight poured into crown, right leg extends back. Then gently bending the left knee, step the right foot way back, release the bind. Eyes of warrior two, straighten that left leg as you rise, heel to right foot in short and stance, deep in your left heel, crease extend left arm forward, reach. Left hand to ankle, shin floor, right arm extends up and twist. Yes, I know that the West. It's a bad rap for being fixated on the asana. I believe that we are fixated on the asanas that allow us to maintain certain shadow aspects in our respective fields. Both hands come back down to mat, which is exactly why this excavation has been met with so much resistance. Speak the right foot forward into the right. We identify with our likes and our dislikes. Don't do that. <laughs> you are not your 
likes and your dislikes. Those are once your fingertips. Your your um, your rajas and your vishas, right? Straighten the arms, rounding up your spine. Plug left your hip bone into left hip socket. Put the left foot off the mat. Which is why they say that there are the secret desires of the heart, right? We're literally expanding the heart's consciousness so that every part of our sphere of existence can receive prana. So the left foot back down. It's amazing because it's like we're swimming in, we're swimming in this prana, but certain spaces in our field are suffocating because we cannot access them. No longer walk the hands over to the left. We're going to change that humanity. Right hand plants outer to the left foot, left hand to your sacrum, roll the left shoulder back. I like to joke, I'm like, I feel like I'm like the Gidget of yoga. Like, there's going to be so many yogis once they get it, once they really understand metaphysics that will far surpass me. Left arm can extend up and twist. I mean, I am going to stay obsessed though. Apparently, I might get too off track, but apparently Gidget stopped surfing. What? <laughs> All your servers are like, are you serious? Once you're a surfer, you're a surfer for life. All right. <laughs> Gently bend the left knee. Enough of that. Knee weight forward. Press up, lift up, pull the right leg up. I can guarantee I'll be doing yoga all of my life. Bend the right ears back with the left hand to the right foot. I am eating as many karmas as I possibly can in this lifetime. Kick the foot as the hands sink the heart forward. Gently release. We extend the right leg back. Left hand to mat. Take a moment and support a warrior three. Come back to the breath. Roll that right hip to stack. Right arm extends up. Ardha Chandrasana half moon pose. Maybe bend the right knee. Reach back with the right hand for the right foot. Kick the foot into the hand. Slingshot the heart forward towards the front of the room. Amazing. Gently release. We extend the right leg back. Both hands to mat, standing splits. We extend, breathe into your left hamstrings. All right, and here it is, hands can plant. If you want to, you can always just step that right foot forward. If you're just taking this class to watch and to witness, it's okay, watch first, it's all good. Take it up, handstanders. Now, connect the legs together at the top. Again, it's much easier, even though I don't have a super open middle split, I kind of have to do a little tiny bit of a hollow back here, as I'm sure you'll see. And now I shift weight over the left hand. You want, since we're stacking over the left hand, the right hip to step. He's got some work to do to catch up with Ray. Right side dominant sports. Inhale, pull chest forward. Find length arch. And exhale, the forward fold it. Well done, yogis. All right, heel to the feet out to about hips distance apart. Two fist distance if you want to measure it out. Peace and fingers and thumbs. You can catch the big toes. Inhale as you find length of the spine. And exhale, the forward fold. Just going to crank up the heat on those hips a little bit. Right hand to your right hip, shift weight into the right foot, and then reach your eyes with the left foot in hand. Come to stand. Left knee can stay bent, you can help yourself if you need to. Open the left leg out to the left, maybe grow a tree branch. Just for fun, if it brings you joy, hinge from hips, slowly lower that left foot down to meet the right. All about holding space, right? The physical body can't get there, then the prana can't get there. Reach your eyes and back up again. Amazing. Back through the center, reach across. Right hand catches average of knee or average of foot. Reach your left hand back and twist. For new one as you twist, gaze over left shoulder, left fingertips. Back through the center, interlace fingers around the sole of the foot. Slowly lower down, this is force. Take it to the ground. All right. When you're ready, press it up, lift up, reach your eyes. You release the foot, hands to hips, or go branch is here for five, four, three, two, and one. Sweep it back. Warrior three. Gently bend the right knee. Both arms sweep. Exhale, hands to ground. Walk right foot to the right, left knee lowers, forearms lower. So again, 
The hips have got to be open, absolutely crucial. Right hand to right knee, face over, right shoulder. Come on to the fleshy part of the left knee. Bend left knee, reach back with the right hand for your left foot, press heel to our seat. Otherwise, the geometry, the symmetry, it's just not there. And you can get away with over-efforting in a two-handed handstand. Just, just not possible in a one-handed handstand. Back to the center. Walk that right foot back in the midline. Not for a prolonged period of time, anyways. Straight through the right leg. Fast splits, full splits. Slide the right foot forward and walk the left foot back. I've been scouring the internet, really. I, I watch it like a hawk. All right, yogis. From here, walk the hands to the left. I want you, if you can, I know I normally have you bend the left knee, and if you need to, yes, bend the left knee, come into your half middle, or if you have it in your practice, you can take the full middle. Gotta love it. And people told me that because I was obsessed with handstands, I wouldn't grow to appreciate other parts of the practice. <sighs> Whatever. Naysayers. Back or two. Middle or side splits. Mentally bending the right knee. Walk right foot behind left wrist. Release the right knee behind the right wrist. Half pigeon pose. Gaze back at left leg in line with the hip. Inhale to find leg. Exhale. Forward fold. Oh my goodness. Yeah. You've got to be well polished. Main thing though I've noticed with some of the, uh, especially male hand balancers, is Sometimes they don't always have open heart spaces. The female hand balancers, on the other hand, wow. <laughs> there is some very exquisite sacred geometry being drawn by the human form on this planetary grid right now. It's amazing, right? So th there is potential for backbending in one arm handstands and, and quite deep, I might add. It's mind-blowing how strong and how flexible we can become so we can protect the spine as we go about this excavation. All right. Speaking of which, if you would like to backbend, walk the hands back in. Maybe work the quad stretch first, bend left knee, reach back with the left hand for the left foot, press heel towards seat. Yeah, eventually these guys meet. You can take mermaid, but it's elbow crease. Or, as you know, my favorite variation, one of my favorites, reach back, so many variations. You can reach back, catch that half bind, then overhead grip, deep ujjayi breaths. And then gently release. Walk the hands in, tuck the back toes, engage the left thigh, lift the left knee, slide right leg to the left, and set the right hip down. Walk the hands to the right. Left forearm lowers and gently twist, waking the spine out of toxins. Walk the hands back into center. Keep walking them to the left. Set your left hip down. Take a seat. My yogis always groan whenever I teach this, but I'm telling you, it is absolutely crucial, quintessential. Hands spray your right thigh. Lovingly plug the right femur head going into the right hip socket and then float the right foot up and pulse here for five, four, three, two, one. Set it back down, lean weight forward, press up, lift up, float something up. And then gently set back down, release. Walk the hands back over to the right. And it's quick and easy, right? I'm just doing half and half on either side. Back into your Plank. Press them through all four foundational points. Lift the hips up. Now left foot swings down. Left arm extends. Roll your left shoulder back. Puff the chest. Maybe float that right foot up. Left hand catches outer edge. Reach it forward towards front of the room. Believe it or not, this is a one arm handstand. It can be. Gently release. Rebend right knee. Left hand bends. Sweep right leg up and back. Hip circles, ankle circles. Maybe you're going to the outer edge of the left foot and let in your right hand float a tree. Maybe you'll be toe lock. Wild thing. Right foot slips back behind. Press up through both feet. If you're feeling it, 
full Ardhanasana, upper facing bow. And then roll it back through your Vinyasa at your own pace. Or skip it, no worries. Left hand points back towards midline. Roll back into downward facing dog pose. Inhale, roll the spine forward like a wave into your plank. Exhale, shut the hug the elbows in. Inhale, Ardha Mukha. And exhale, Ardha Mukha Shanasana. All right, yogis, from downward facing. Lift the heels, bend the knees. Gaze forward in between, thumbs exhale, step, let me hop, make your way. Handstanders, I want you to try some tucks to straight up and down. Tuck to straight up and down. Maybe a few more. So good for your central core. And then slowly lower it down. Toes can tap. Feet. Hips distance apart. Again, measure it out. Two fist distance. Peace sign fingers and thumbs. Catch the big toes. Inhale as you find length through the spine. Exhale the forward fold. Left hand to your left hip. Shift weight into your left foot. Root to rise with the right foot in hand. Come to stand. Beautiful work, yogis. Now open right leg out to the right. Maybe go a tree branch with the left arm. I notice Andre Bondarenko do this stuff all the time. I'm like, yes, he gets it. It's all about holding space. Hinge at the hips. Slowly lower, right foot down. Take the left. Beautiful work, yogis. And rise that right leg back up. We want our legs to be autonomous so that we can feel within our space. Back to the center. Reach across. That time catch the outer edge of knee or outer edge of foot. Get your right hand back, especially this one. We'll do this one right before he goes up into his one of our handstands. And like I always say, I've been saying this for years, if we do single standing leg postures, why aren't we doing single arm standing postures? Back through the center, interlace fingers down the right sole of the foot, and slowly lower. Whew. Warm things up, getting that hip hot, love the tapas when you're ready. Press it up, lift up, root to rise. Oh yeah. Release the foot, hands the hips, work our branches here for five, four, three, two. Sweep it back. Warrior three. Gently bend that knee, step right foot way back, high crescent pose. Both arms sweep. Hands to mat. Walk left foot over to the left, right knee lowers, forearms lower. Ease into the hip stretch and all the hips from side to side. Honestly, I wanted to wait until I was a little bit deeper in my own investigation in OAHS, but the, the desperate times call for desperate measures. So I'm going in and I'm teaching you guys what I know as, as soon as I can so that we can all get on board with this collective ascension. Left hand to left knee, gaze over left shoulder. Come onto the fleshy part of the right knee, bend right knee, and reach back with the left hand to the right foot. And again, like I mentioned before, there are some nitty gritty karmas stored in these spaces. And as the breath begins to infiltrate, we get the opportunity to witness. So whatever comes up, just be the witness. Just observe and notice what comes up with loving appreciation. Gently release. Walk left foot back through midline and straighten through left leg half splits, full splits. I can honestly say I don't I don't know if a lot of these hand balancers are gazing inwards, but I I definitely am because I that was one of the main reasons why I even started to get into inversions. Slide the left foot forward, walk the right foot back. Again, I was in that camp of oh, it's just a party trick. I I was there too, so I I don't blame anyone that that gives me a hard time and calls me a, a trick pony, it's fine, it's totally cool. Um, I, I know the truth now and, and people can say that about me and it's, it's not going to affect me because the, the, the vision's coming in with, 
increasing clarity, clarity as I continue to expand. So there, my, my ego has completely stepped out of denial and I'm willing to stay disciplined and continue to do this work. But honestly, the, some of the things that come up, walk my hands over to the right, again, you can bend right, you can put back behind, are so gnarly that I need to kind of just sit with them, right? Like I, I need to actually just process and acknowledge they say that all of our human history is stored up in our bodies and space. So we are not just clearing on behalf of our own microcosm, but on behalf of the whole macrocosm. And that does not exclude also the history of various um, other in intelligent species. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Beautiful work. And then when you're ready, coming back through to center. Side slips. Clearly, still got a little bit more work to do there. Ricky Pedro let me. None of those are perfect. If anyone says they're an ascended master, mm, think twice about that person. Walk the left behind your right wrist, release the left knee behind the left wrist, gaze back at the right leg in line with the hip. Inhale as you find length and exhale to four. Hold it. Okay, if we're all still incarnating here, Right, and cities haven't been actualized yet, then um, we, we've all got some work to do, which is just plain and simp, right? So, and we're infinite too, so again, the trick is to find joy in this process. I'm just hoping that I can start to break down some of these massive blockages that are preventing us from continuing to grow. And again, like I was saying, I think that there is a plateau effect that's taking place and so if anything comes out of this shelter in place, I want it to be that we break past this blockage because it has been aggravating me to no end. I'm not going to get into it, but those karmas that I started to clear and other people were unwilling to clear in the community, it caused a backlash and a, a rift to form. Um, because by my merely existing, it's like I was embodying truth to such a great extent that those that were unwilling to receive that truth uh, li literally started to attack me in passive-aggressive manners, of course, and covert manners, but um, yeah, I'm over it. I'm really over it, so <laughs> it's time to grow up, guys. It really is. So those of you that took the back then, start to walk your hands in. The main thing is, as we go about this excavation, this investigation of self, that you keep in mind the universal laws, right? And the gender principle is crucial. If you create too much strength and not enough feminine energy, you can block off heart space. Bend the right knee or trap the right hand to the right foot. And again, if heart chakra is blocked off, that's our intermediary, that's our portal into the sophic gunas. You won't be able to process karma. So even if you do achieve the one arm handstand, if you don't have the feminine aspect to counterbalance the masculine aspect, then of course that can cause issues with your processing of karmic debris, which we don't want. So again, bringing this awareness of the intellectualism behind yana yoga and metaphysics into your practice, right? Work smarter, not harder. <laughs> Reaching back to that half line if you have it, and then maybe overhead grip, and maintain the neutral lips. And gently release when you're complete. Hands to mat. Tuck the back toes. Engage the right back. Lift the right knee up. Slide left leg to the right. Set the left hip down. Walk the hand to the left. Right forearm lowers. And gently twist. I'm really grateful though, all of that upheaval that came up for me. It really just reaffirmed metaphysics, all of it. Back through the center. Pressing down through the forearms. And then drag that left hip back behind. If there was any shadow of a doubt about universal laws and how they operate in our field, that was just completely obliterated by various persons' uh, behavioral patterns. <laughs> Walk the hands in. Put the right, set the right hip down. Again, we're just doing half and half, so it shouldn't be too challenging. But this stuff is, again, so, so important. We want to be able to feel with our legs in space. Again, you can get away with the janky legs in a two-handed handstand, not one-handed handstand. Hands, bring your left eye, plug left femur head, going into left hip socket. Put left foot off the mat and pulse here for five, four, three, 
two, and one. Step back down. Lean weight forward, press up, lift up, look something up. And then gently step back down. Walk the hands back over to the left. Roll that right big toe down, back down to the ground. Press down through all four foundational points. Lift the hips up, variation of plank. Right foot swings down, right arm extends. Roll the right shoulder back. Now maybe float that left foot up. Right hand can catch the outer edge. Reach it forward towards the front of the air. Release, sweep left leg up and back. Hip circles, ankle circles, maybe. Rotate to outer to right foot. Push the floor away, lift the hips up, float a tree, yogi toe. And then left foot can step back behind. Press down through both feet, lift the hips up for your wild thing. Maybe full upward facing. Urdhva Dhammarasana. Again, keep that heart open as you continue to build strength. Right hand points back towards midline. Roll back into downward face. And vinyasa, if it's pleasing, roll this back forward into your plank pose as you inhale. Exhale, push up around the hug elbows in. Inhale to your earth, and look over the shoulders back. And exhale, roll over to us. Hips lift up and back, downward facing dog pose. From downward facing, knees to mat, hips to heels. Child's pose. Roll the spine forward, right thighs, rest down on mat. Balasana. Take a few moments to integrate. Rolling the spine up through the ceiling. Okay, again, just do what you can. And if you're just going to witness, that's okay. We're going to relocate to the wall space and take them out with you. I think that there's going to be all sorts of new props. They're going to make their way onto the market for the yoga community. I'm really excited. So um, hand balancing blocks, definitely canes are going to become really popular too. And I do believe that, um, yeah, we will come up with all sorts of, of cool things to continue to enhance our investigation of self. So I'm just going to give you a whole spectrum of various things that you can do while exercises to prepare you for one arm handstands because you really need to set the line and to build strength around that line until we can start branching off in other ways. So there's, there's so many beautiful shapes. Main thing here is if you can come all the way to the wall here, then you should be okay. And if you haven't done toes and nose, then maybe just explore toes and nose today. You don't have to take it all the way to the wall. Feel free to watch it first. Uh, honestly, it, it kind of freaks me out sometimes when I teach this, when I see people start to bend in their elbows. Because if you can't do a handstand push-up and you've already walked your way all the way into the wall and you start to bend in the elbows, then you're going straight down. So make sure that, and I hate using the word walk out, because you are spiraling energy, so you're not dumping weight in the elbow joint. That can cause issues over time. But um, you do want a nice straight line here. So and as soon as you start to bend the elbows, you're going down. So main thing is, is make sure that you have the strength in your arms to navigate into the space safely. And if you have a friend or a roommate that can help support you, help spot you, make sure that you don't flip the back over into a back bend. That's also really nice too if you're brand new to this. So main thing is make sure you have a spotter, make sure you have the arm strength necessary to do this move, this uh, next exercise. So we'll start with legs up, or L shape, not legs up against the wall. We'll, we'll end up there, we'll end up there. So legs distance away from the wall. Hands are just shoulder distance apart. Middle fingers in line, thumbs in line. Standard L shape. Walk your feet up the wall, hips come up and over the shoulders. So you can actually work one arm here. Again, same thing. You'll kind of shift weight over to one side. Lift one of fingertips, maybe float the arm up. And then switch. And most of you might have noticed right away that you have to push. Pull your arm up. Amazing. And then take a moment, release. So exciting. I feel like we're 
we're escaping right now. <laughs> this is like the great escape. Um, if anybody watched that old movie, Steve the Queen is such a hottie. All right, so now that we have some heat, counterbalance with the feminine aspect. Two feet distance away from the wall. Walk the hands up the wall and then melt your heart like a puppy dog. I see so many people do this, which you're, you still might get a little bit out of that, but try and get your actual chest onto the wall so you can pull energy. It's all about energy, Yogi. So we're becoming an electromagnetic engineer. So try to get your chest all the way to the wall so you can pull rooting of your bunny forces off of the wall and directly into the thoracic. Because that's that's the that's the crusty business right there. Walk it up, melt. I love it too because when you do generate heat, the bath bends become so delicious. And then roll up off of the wall again. Woo! Every once in a while I get those like tingly sensations. Sometimes I start to see like little sparkles. So uh, FYI, if that happens. Totally normal. Totally, totally standard. Um, <laughs> exquisite, but you know, it's, it, it comes, it comes with the vehicle. All right, so <laughs> now we walk it all the way in. Um, and so we'll do the legs out wide initially to start. And before we actually take it directly to the wall, facing the wall, which can be really intimidating at first, in case you haven't watched uh, one of my earlier videos where I go over this, you can, again, instead of facing the wall, which can be incredibly intimidating, you can hop it up. So hop it up, find the wall, take the legs wide, and then shift weight onto one side. Get light in one hand, maybe flip the hand up. Push the floor away, and the opposite hip stacks over the ground and shoulder. Maybe bring the legs together at the top. Optional, optional, optional. This is much trickier to find the straight up and down. And then, when you're ready, switch. Again, spread those fingers wide. Press firmly through the index finger and thumb up with inner thigh. Get light in the right hand. Push the floor away, but also plug the humerus head bone into the shoulder socket. Flip that other arm up. Maybe also extend the legs together at the top. Almost forgot. And then release it back down. Roll out those wrists. It's good stuff. But again, you really want to make sure that you love up those wrists. So now you can grab up the motorcycle, turn the key, switch. And we'll take another back bend, just kind of switching things up so that we're also cultivating the feminine aspect. About an arm's distance away from the wall. Engaging your core. Protect your lower spine. Reach back with both hands and connect to the wall. Send breath into that space. And then rise up. Whew. Delicious. <laughs> Absolutely love it. Okay, so now I'm going to actually do facing the wall. Which all hand balancers say you should do all of your work facing the wall because that way you know right, this is a straight line and I'm sure my back was a little bit slanted and a little bit of a hollow back earlier and it probably will be like I said I still have some work to do in my middle splits I'm giving this stuff to you a little bit early so that we can all get on the same uh, kundalini train of expansion <laughs> so all right We'll start with the middle first because it actually is a little bit easier. And then we'll do the straight up and down individually. All right, so I might need to actually scoot the water a little bit more. Give myself some more wall space to work with here. All right, here we go. Walk the feet up the wall, just about halfway, and the legs can come up wide. Start to walk the hands in. And again, this is where the open hips come in. Handy. 
Just go to your depth as far as you can. And then when you're as deep as you can go, shift it onto one hip, get by one fingertips, maybe float the arm up, and hold. Remember, you have to push the floor away. Also, opposite hip stacks over the grounded shoulder. And then switch. Getting light in the fingertips. Push the floor away, float the arm up. And then walk it back up. All right, shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. Now we're going to take another back bend. This time we'll take Urdhva Dhanurasana with the wall assist. So you can come to lie down onto your back. We've been prepping, so if you want to repeat any of the back bends that we did prior, just to utilize the heat that you've created, the masculine aspect that you've generated, you can take puppy dog against the wall, or you can reach back and connect to the wall on a standing back bend. Those who are ready for Urdhva. Done rasana, lie back, hands come alongside the ears, fingers point towards your shoulders, press it up, lift it up, roll the spine up, bridge pose, roll it all the way up into your full orbit on rasana, and maybe press the chest towards the wall. And here you can actually walk the hands up. Love it, right? That is balance between the masculine and the feminine right there. Now final, and notice we're kind of getting that straight axis, right? The legs wide, the legs straight up. And once you have those two axes firmly established, then you can start to branch off. So this is, this is totally rudimental, essential, fundamental excavation. We're getting our primary lines, our primary highways set. Now, we walk it in from the L shape. And again, if you are at all nervous about flipping over into a back bend, this one especially, have someone stand behind you or just watch and visually receive. So you're walking in all the way in until you're at toes and nose. Again, the heels of the hands don't have to be the floorboard. Go in as far as you can and as far as feels comfortable. Then shift weight onto one side, get light, and put that arm up. Hold. Again, you're pushing. The opposite shoulder that is not grounded is slightly elevated as well. You're making a rhombus, a parallelogram. And then switch over to the other side. Get that from the fingertips. Maybe float the arm up. Beautiful work. And breathe. Don't forget to breathe. That's the whole point. Share life force energy with the grid. And then some lower. Again, you can also also demonstrate instead of walking out, if you don't have any neighbor nearby, you can cartwheel out. Rub that motorcycle to the key. Woohoo! Well done. Let's shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. This stuff works, it really does. Okay. One more back bend while we're here. You can lower it down onto the knees. If you need to, feel free to roll up your mat if you need a little bit of extra protection for the knees. And then both hands reach back. Going back into our Ustrasana, camel pose. 
And what I love about taking camera pose with the wall assist is you can actually, again, utilize reading and rebounding forces through the arms, take it directly into the heart space. Maybe walk it down. place to let that settle in and integrate. All right, and now from here, draw your, let's start with the left foot on top of the right thigh and slide the right foot down in your figure four. Left hand can press the left knee away. So this can get a little bit complex. So gaze up here, if you are at all confused, you'll slide the right foot down the wall to the floorboard. So the right foot is firmly planted on the floorboard, left foot is firmly planted on the floor, and then use your right hand to push that left knee away. Counterbalancing the back bends. This is some really epic work yogis. Thank you on behalf of the collective for beginning this excavation work, even if that means you were just viewing back through the center. Slide that right foot back up. And then switch. Left leg extends, right ankle on top of left thigh. Then the left knee, left foot slides down the wall. Use your right hand to press the right knee away. Now slide the left foot down to the floorboard. Again, left foot is firmly planted on the floorboard. Right foot is now planted on the floor. Left hand presses the right knee away. Deep breaths, breathe into that space. And when you're ready, back up. We extend the left leg, we extend the right leg. So now we've twisted, nice little counterbalance preparation for a forward fold. Walk the feet down the mat, or down, down the wall. Press down through the feet into the wall. Rise the hips up. Shoulder stand. Now walk the hands down the back towards the shoulder blades. Press chest towards chin. You can stay here or extend the legs. And then maybe lower the feet. Palasana. Bend the knees. Karnapadasana. And then we extend. Feet back to the wall. Slowly lower the spine back down. One vertebra at a time. Sit on to lower very last. And then. Surrender completely to gravity. If you want to, you can relocate back to the center of the room. Uh, take my Shavasana here. A lovely uh, adage, if you want, you can add something heavy, like a sandbag to your feet. It'll help to plug the femur hip bones into the hip socket. If you want, you can also take Baddha Konasana, which is one of my favorites here. Again. Legs up against the wall is essentially an inversion, a passive inversion, so you are receiving oxygen and blood flow into the upper hemispheres. It's a great way to conclude this practice so that you can extrapolate all the new information, acknowledge the stagnant energy that you are able to release, the deficient patterning systems that are no longer serving, and giving them your loving appreciation as you surrender them to 
the crown release it out through the halo and ask that it come back in a higher vibrational frequency formation. And the highest light within me truly sees and honors the highest light within you. I thank you for your practice and your presence. Namaste.